This episode of the Therapy Unmasked podcast is brought to you by the Therapy Unmasked online courses. We currently have three subjects available. We have feeding, occupational therapy, as well as speech therapy with physical therapy coming soon. These courses are taught by some of the best pediatric therapists out there, and they are teaching you the tactics that they use every day in their sessions. To find out if these courses will benefit you and your family, click the link in the description or show notes to find out more. I love the little people that I work with. That is one of my the major things that I love is it's the little people and the relationships that I gain with them and their parents. But all of a sudden, when I was on the other side of the table, it was hard. And it was, now I'm probably going to get emotional, but but as a mom, all of a sudden, it's my kid that's there and that my kiddo that needs the help. And it was really hard for me, honestly, to think objectively about my own child. I can think objectively about other kiddos and I can put my whole heart into it, but I was so grateful for the resources that helped me too. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Therapy Unmasked. As always, I'm joined by Nick here, the owner of Ability Innovations. And we have a really special guest here. People have been telling me since I started working here that I have to get Brooke Buchanan on the podcast. And so I made it happen. So welcome to the podcast, That's really nice. Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Brooke, just like for people who maybe don't know who you are, um, do you want to just give us an introduction? I actually do a little bit of PRN at Ability Innovations. Um, I've known Nick for four or five years and Sarah, and then they kind of took me under their wings, and I've just been able to fill in for speech therapists here. Um, I also work at a charter school, and I also see some of my own private clients sometimes. I am a mom of three boys, um, one of which has significant speech delays and just global delays. So I have learned a lot as a parent and as a speech therapist with my little Cole. Is that what kind of drew you into being an SLP is your son or were you an SLP before? Came along the way. It came along the way. It's one of the ways that I see how honestly God works in your life. I actually went to school to be an accountant and <laughs> I did not know that. Uh uh. I I remember coming home from summer from college one summer and I didn't I wasn't doing great in my classes and I remember my dad saying are you sure this is what you want to do Brooke and I said yeah I like it but I don't like the tax part and my dad kind of chuckled and he <laughs> said well <laughs> it might not be the best field so right my mom had a friend that was a speech therapist I grew up in Evanston Wyoming and I went and shadowed that friend at the elementary school there and from there it I just knew like I just knew that's what I wanted to do so I switched gears and I did my undergrad at Utah State and I did my graduate program at Utah State. So I was an SLP long before I had um, Cole. And I actually have a son that passed away that also had a lot of, he had swallowing and feeding um, things, but I could just see how all of my um, experience had, had been preparing me for my own children. Uh -huh. Yeah, and so those things came along the way, and you're like, "Oh, like this is, this is good that I learned all this stuff, and I, I kind of can get, hit the ground running or whatever." Yeah, it was, and it's kind of funny. Like I remember sitting in one of the graduate school classes, and it was a feeding class, and it was really, really, really hard. I didn't like it. I and I still the medical part is not my forte, and I remember thinking, "It's okay, Brooke, just pass the class, and you'll never have to do this again." And little did I know that I've had to do it <laughs> day near every day yeah. since then. But I am so grateful for the knowledge that I have, the education, the resources that I have, because it's opened up a field of knowledge. Well, and even having like a child with a disability or with multiple disabilities, like it, it kind of hits you like a deer in the headlights and you don't always know what to do. And you had some training, but talk about kind of that process of even though you had training, like what kinds of things did you have to face and learn and and how did it grow you? I love the little people that I work with. That is one of my the major things that I love is it's the little people and the relationships that I gain with them and their parents. But all of a sudden, when I was on the other side of the table, it was hard. And it was, now I'm probably going to get emotional, but, but as a mom, 
all of a sudden it's my kid that sits there and that my kiddo that needs the help. And it was really hard for me, honestly, to think objectively about my own child. I can think objectively about other kiddos and I can put my whole heart into it. And I put my whole heart into my little Weston and my little Cole. But I was so grateful for the resources that helped me too, because because it's hard because your heart is there. And sometimes it was hard because I knew too much, honest, almost. Like, yeah. even with my little Cole, like, it's taken me, he's going to be nine in a month. And it's taken me a long time to realize that his speech probably is never going to be as functional as I would like it to be. And he he has an AAC device and he uses all kinds of, and he's he's blossoming, he's doing so well. But it's taken me a while as a parent to realize that this is what it's going to look like. And and I and I hope that it's helped make me a better speech therapist because I understand it from a mom's perspective and I understand that it's really hard when Cole comes home on the bus and he's crying and he can't tell me what happened that day. Like you're relying on other people and you're relying on his limited vocabulary. It's so I'm understand like I'm understanding as a parent. I get it. In a lot of different way. How old is Cole now? He's eight. He'll be nine in about a month. Does he? So obviously, like you're able to help him out because you are a speech therapist. I'm assuming he takes like speech therapy at school as well. Yes. Does he also do it privately? We're not doing private at the moment. Um, he, he is doing uh, speech therapy. He has speech therapy services at school. Cole also has apraxia. Um which has been even more difficult to find a speech therapist that would be able to help him adequately. I actually went and did a praxia boot camp last summer so that I would be better equipped to be able to help Cole with that. So he just, we've gone back and forth many times, kind of taking breaks, kind of go at it, just kind of whatever I feel like Cole needs at the, at the time. And I we do a lot at home to incorporate, not formal sit down. That's what else I've learned is that it doesn't have to be formal sit down thing. And as a parent, sometimes at night I go to bed and think, oh my gosh, I have spent more time with speech with other kiddos than I have with Cole. But I'm learning too, as a parent, it's not, it's not about sitting down at the table. It's about just incorporating it in those everyday, the everyday interactions, mm -hmm. and everyday the, interactions and what they're already doing in their yep. life. Yeah. Yep. Not sitting yep. at a table. Yep. Yeah. And that, and that is where Cole has blossomed is because it's not as formal. It's not as, and it's, and he's more willing to let me help him when we're not, it's not as structured and we make it a game and we make it fun and we giggle and we laugh. And that's why I love ability innovations is because it's that play. Well, what would you say about like with parents that they want to learn more of what to do with their kids and, and where could they go for some of those answers? Like they can go and talk to their speech path that they work with, but what else can they do? Networking is a huge thing. Like I think, I think talking to, yes, like getting getting outside help getting resources um i'm also part of some like facebook groups that are specific to apraxia that are specific to learning disabilities to those kind of things and it and even though i haven't met many of these people in real life it just gives you a sense of camaraderie yeah. and you kind of feel you need that mm -hmm. yeah you do yeah yeah community helps a lot yeah. community helps you know. a lot and honestly, even with the time that Cole has spent, Cole's done, he's doing occupational therapy through Ability right now. He's done speech through here too, off and on. I've become friends with many of the parents here too, like just sitting in the waiting room and to not be afraid. And this is hard for me sometimes, but to go out of my comfort zone and and to say hi and to chat because I've become friends with a lot of of people that I've met here. And that even though our kiddos are different, we share some of the same struggles, same feelings, same. It's just nice to know that you have other people that understand because it's a whole different, it's, it's just a different road and it's a really good road. It's, it's blessed my life. It's just, it's just, it can be hard and it can be lonely sometimes and very overwhelming sometimes. And like you mentioned, the community aspect of it, you know, when you find people in a similar situation as you, you don't really feel as alone as you did before. I'm sure there are still times where things feel overwhelming and you feel like things are getting out of control. But if we can just rein that in and, and part of what Ability Innovations is, is we like to like foster an environment of community. A lot of our therapists 
um, work with other therapists to like help meet goals. Because at the end of the day, it's not about who's the best therapist. It's about how we can help these kids in the best way possible. And that makes me think of a couple, it's probably been a year, maybe two years. Cole was, we were doing therapy in the Ogden office, but he was working with, her name was Ashley. She was a speech therapist here and we loved her. And her and Lexi, who's an OT, they kind of teamed up to do some stuff with Cole because Cole needed lots of movement and lots. And Nick's worked lots with Cole. He's on the move a lot. Like he just needs to keep going. But I have the cutest video of them both working together. And Cole said the word stop for the first time. And Lexi and Ashley were cheering for him. And Cole was cheering and everybody was clapping. And it's one of my favorite my favorite videos. Cole watches on repeat. And I think that's the true Cole loves to come. He love it's that he feels that success. I see it. It's like a family. Everybody's cheering for everybody. And you might not see that if if uh kids are just coming and sitting at a table the whole time. No. But Cole is super invested, right? <laughs> he is super invested. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love that. Yeah. Well, yeah. and Cole has learned all these new abilities and things like that. Um, you were talking about when you sit with parents and and you're talking about some of the things that um, the commonalities that you have, but you also mentioned something about how the things that you've learned, are there any superpowers that you have kind of developed since having kids with disabilities and even just in your career? Hopefully one of my superpowers is that it has opened up my heart to understand life and to understand like what life is really about. Sorry, guys. Um, just that what's truly important in life, like yeah. it kind of puts it into perspective that it's the little things that really are big things. It's the, it's when Cole took his first step at almost five years old. Then I wondered if that would happen. It was when Cole said, mom, it's when Cole like looks at me through the bus. And today he did the little sign language that I love you. It's it's that I think as a speech therapist, it's made me really, really, really think about what goals I work on with the kids and what is going to be the most functional for them and going to help them and their families. And I have tried really, really hard to be in the trenches with the parents, so to speak, because I have appreciated the people that have been in the trenches with me. There's been many times at Cole's therapy appointments that I have sat and cried through the whole thing because you're looking at it and thinking, oh my goodness, he has a lot of big mountains to climb and how is he going to do that? And you, it is overwhelming. And I tend to look really, really far ahead. So I'm learning slowly that you just got to look one step at a time, one step at a time. And my mom always tells me, Brooke is slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady wins the race. And Cole is a perfect example of that to me. Slow and steady does win the race. And the race is different than I thought it was going to be. The race is having a different outcome than I thought it was going to be, but it's okay. And it's been, it's been a hard journey, but it's been a beautiful journey too. And I am thankful for that. And for the relationships that I've got to have with the parents that I've worked with. And I'm thankful on the other side for the therapists that have been there for me too, because they're some of my dearest friends now. I did want to ask um, if you're comfortable talking about it, what, what are some of those things that the therapists have done to be in the trenches with you as you've gone through this journey? Some of I sometimes it honestly, there have been a couple sessions where I have just cried and they have, they have let me cry. They have been there. They have listened. I have never felt judged. And as a parent too, I have felt like this overwhelming. And I think for me, sometimes it maybe doubled because I'm a speech therapist and a parent. And so I know what I should be doing with Cole all of the time. And realistically, I haven't been able to do that time. And, and I have an almost 16 year old and just family and all of the other things. So I have appreciated them not being judgmental, that they have let me cry. They have called and checked on me just in the week at on me and also on Cole. And I have appreciated, I have appreciated that. It's the the little things. Lexi giving me a hug the other day on a hard day when Cole went to OT. It's those kind of things that I feel like they have truly seen me, seen me. And I have loved that about ability 
innovations. I think I have told Nick that from the beginning is that there's just something different here. We've been to lots of different clinics around here before we came to Ability and and we'll never go anywhere else because there's just that feeling, that family of that family feeling. I think parents need that too, right? Yeah. It can't just be like I go and drop my kid off at therapy and then pick them up and and I don't know what happened there. Like, no. There has to be a connection, not just for the kid, but for the parents, right? Yeah. Yep. And they want to know that they, everybody wants to be taken care of. And I think that's what I have, have appreciated that I feel like I've been taken care of just as much as Cole has been taken care of. And I feel like there is such power in that when we all share that, that that's when mountains start to really move all the way, all the way across the board. I love that you have helped us to be part of your village, and I feel so honored that there's so many families out there that we are we are part of their village. We're part of their tribe to help their their little ones, and it's it's truly like a work of of joy for all of us. And it's it's not always like the most glamorous thing, or <laughs> you know, there's there's ups and downs. But the thing that's beautiful, like you're saying, is is that opportunity that we have to connect with people yeah. and yeah. mountains move. And it's mountains great. do move and it makes it all worth it. And it's those moments that you think it's all, it's all worth it. It is. I love what you said. It is a work of joy. I look back at like my experience with Cole too. Like I remember when Cole was on his hands and knees and then he got a walker and he had a wheelchair there for a little bit. And now he just like, I'm amazed when I see him, he, he just tackles everything any kind of mobility that he needs to do. He does. I see him like jump off the curb now. <laughs> it's so amazing to see yeah. like that progression that he's come. And then I remember, yeah, him saying his first words and then yeah. he would come and show me what he's learned. <laughs> and then like I would have him like try different therapist names. And now he comes into the clinic and he's like, Lexi. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, he, and you can tell what he's saying. And yeah. He and just it's amazing. Beams. And it's, it's been so fun to watch him blossom because he just has. When well, he has that personality. Anyway, he does. <laughs> he's everybody's little buddy. He is everybody's little buddy. Yes. He has a very magnetic personality. So it's fun to see him blossom. With, in all of those ways. One thing at Ability Innovations is we try to correlate play with learning as much as we can. We want the kids to be playing and having fun, but also be reaching their milestones and their goals. Have you seen that with Cole? And has he like been able to incorporate that more in like his life outside of therapy? Yeah, yes. And he, he loves to come here because to him it is, it's not... It's not work. I mean, it is work. And he'll definitely put up a stink about like doing the things and and he'll let you know um, that he's not happy about it, but he'll still do it. And I have seen, I have seen that carry over into home. I have seen his intention span increase. I have seen his endurance increase. I have seen him go from like Nick was saying to crawling on his hands and knees to now he has a little adapted bike and he zooms around the neighborhood on that thing. So I have seen it carry over. And as I've seen it carry over at home, I have seen his confidence increase and that he is more willing to try things. And he and now he wants to be independent and in about everything that he can. He waits for the milk to get like this bit, this much in the gallon because then he can get it out of the fridge and he can pour it into his cup. And the other day he spilled, but I watched him go get a towel and he wiped it up as best as he could. <laughs> That's awesome. I, and mm -hmm. I think it's all of these things, all, all of these things, things that he's learning and their life skills and their fine motor skills and their gross motor skills and their communication. And it's it's all of those things that I see in the everyday, in our everyday lives that that I never knew if would be possible with Cole. I remember I was playing this game with imperfection, you know, with the little puzzle pieces and they jump. We up. actually bought it after you played it. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't, I mean, I had introduced him to that several times and he was like, no, he could see all the 20 pieces. And he was like, that's too much. But one time we sat down and I, I just kept encouraging him and he put every single piece in this space. And I was like, oh my gosh, this yeah. is monumental. And we, we cheered and we let it pop and we screamed. <laughs> it was great. And I just think like to go from where he was before, where he was like, that looks hard. I'm not even going to try it to, I can do 20 pieces in a perfection game. Yes, it's, it's huge. huge. Yeah. It's huge. And I'm noticing too, that before he would just be like, ah, 
or he'll go because it's just too or he'll hard. Say, Bye, and you just get up and leave <laughs> yeah, and book it out of there. <laughs> and now when I say something, he'll say cool, 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 cool. Like like he wants to do it. Like he wants to try it, which is amazing because there's been many times that he hasn't wanted to try it. So I appreciate all of that. All yeah, of like the carryover. We've worked on not just like incorporating play, but also expanding his playability, yes. like his ability to engage with toys and engage with other people in play and, yeah. and leisure activities. Yep. So it's kind of neat. He's, it is he's neat. Done and I have gamut. seen that too. Um, we live in a really great neighborhood, a cul-de-sac and engaging with others. Cole always wants to engage with others, but there becomes a barrier because of the communication and, and even just his skill level, like he playing the same as other kids has been harder for Colt to learn. So it's been fun to watch even in this last year that he will go and go up to the neighborhood boys and they have included him in, in helping throw a football back and forth. And they've been so great. And Cole, Cole is confident enough to go and to try it with them. And he might not stay the whole time with them, but he like, he's going up there and he's engaging. And I, it's just made my heart feel so happy to watch him and thankful for those kids and those those kids in our neighborhood that are including, including him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, I feel like that's just really proof, right? That play and therapy can go hand in hand and it works and you see results and, and you see people hit these milestones. Brooke, thank you for joining us today. Oh, my I, pleasure. And I know a lot of this stuff was probably not easy to talk about, but we really appreciate you my sharing pleasure. your experiences. It's been good to talk about it. It helps my heart too. And I just, I'm thankful for you guys and for the opportunity and for loving my little Cole and for loving me and letting me be part of this too. Honestly, I'm going to coin that phrase that Nick said. It is a work of joy. Like it is what it, being a speech therapist is what has brought me joy through many, many, many hard times in my life. Um, it's what has kept my feet on the ground. A lot of times I just I just love it. And I'm, I love the little people and I love the power in therapy of all kinds because I've seen it firsthand. That's really why I, that's why I work here. I, I love seeing these kids and I, I think what we do here is such a powerful thing, you know, and it's such an important thing. And, and thank you for all you do. And thanks for sharing your experience. Oh, well, thank you. It's been so fun to be here. Thank you. We'll go ahead and wrap up today, guys. Thanks for joining us for Therapy Unmasked. Um, I did want to quickly plug our courses as well. If you head on over to therapy-unmasked.com, we have three courses available that you can purchase um, for speech therapy, feeding therapy, and occupational therapy. And all of these courses are taught by trained professional licensed therapists here at Ability Innovations, and they just give you tools to help you with your kids at home overcoming milestones, giving you extra support, as well as worksheets that you can work on. Um, we also have lots of free resources on our website at abilityinnovations.com. There's lots of free articles. And Nick and me actually just finished putting together a web page on our website that goes over all of the milestones that kids should be hitting. Yeah, so if you're ever curious, like, are my kids on track? Are they hitting the right milestones? Feel free to reference that page and you can look and see like if your kid is hitting the right milestones or maybe they need more help. Um, and you can also schedule free consultations on there as well to see if outside therapy is right for you. Again, special thanks to Brooke for coming on. Special thanks to Nick for joining me. Um, we will see you in the next episode of Therapy Unmasked. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.